Smile emerged as soon as we decided on what the title of our book was going to be. Um, the book, we were struggling to know what the title would be when we came up with Choosing to Smile. It just seemed to, again, symbolise everything we were about, choosing to uh, smile through the difficult times and how that made things easier for us. And once we had the title, it just seemed natural that we needed to share this with more people um, and develop this Choosing to Smile movement across the world, helping other people that have faced adversity. Yeah, when I was first diagnosed, it was frightening um, for myself. Um, any cancer diagnosis is, but it was also frightening for my family because uh, five years before my diagnosis, um, we lost my brother. And he was 28 years old when he died and I was 28 years old when I was diagnosed. So it was um, really quite frightening for the family. We didn't know what else to think about that. So it was pretty hard for everybody to take. So at that point too, some of the discoveries I had to make on my own, and I had to be positive. I don't think, maybe they didn't know how to be, because it was, it was pretty tough, but I had to learn how to be positive. And it was before I had um, other friends that could also help me in being positive too. So it, it did take quite a bit, quite a bit of strength and to try and turn that all around and say, no, I am going to be fine. For myself, I was really scared with, with losing a big body part that my husband wouldn't love me anymore. That was my biggest worry, I think, was like, oh my gosh, I'm so different from the woman that he met and married that is he still going to love me? And... Uh, Luckily, he did, he does. I had different reactions at different times because I had three different diagnoses and each time the diagnosis is cancer, the fear is intensified because the thought at the back of your mind is, I'm not going to get away with it this time. It's, yeah, and and it's, it's learning to um, go one day at a time, not worry about the future. Um, and uh, I've just been so fortunate that... Um, the worries that I've had, it's 14 years and I'm still here and I'm still smiling. So when we came up with the logo, when I ask a man, what, are the, what do you see when you look at the logo, they'll say, a candle. I'll ask a woman, what do you see when you see this logo? They'll say, I see two silhouettes, nose to nose, forehead to forehead, smiling. It's, it's really an optical illusion and it's very effective because for us it symbolizes the light that comes out of friendship when you're scared when it's dark we always said that at night time is when we would be most afraid and most worried and to us the logo symbolizes that when you're together with friendship there's light no we're not saying that positive thinking is what cured us of our cancers of course not um, we've all had all the treatments that have been available uh, to help us with the cancer but when you're going through treatments like that if you choose to have an attitude of smiling and being positive, it sure makes the process a whole lot easier than getting up every morning and, and being feeling miserable about it. And I think that's what you both have done. Yeah, today. I had um, 40 radiation treatments, and the treatments, I believe, was the big part of the cure, but believing that the treatments were going to work for me, that's what, mm -hmm. what really helped Absolutely. plus getting through that and sometimes having some laughs, actually. The yeah. hospital staff is uh, very good. Um, they're great, great people. And uh, just to work with the treatment, I believe, that helps out. Yeah, having, having the positive attitude definitely didn't cure me. It just made it a whole lot easier to yeah. work through the whole cancer healing process. And, and for me, yeah. Chopping my leg off cured me. <laughs> one, one of the best ways that we're putting this message out is to think through the song we have, a theme song. It's Choosing to Smile. We were sitting around and I just said, I want to write a song. And before I knew it, the words were out there. Well, now what do I do? I wrote, I wrote the words, but I don't know how anything about writing music. But luckily, I have some friends who are in a band, Slapjack, and Trish, Gary, Fred, they decided, yeah, they could do this. They donated their studio. They donated their time, the recording, everything. It just fell into place. And this amazing, magical song 
came about. They even put the three of us in there singing backup, and we all cannot carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> so we have this song with uh, the three of us on it, and it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. With this book, and by telling our story too, we want to get the message. Well, each of us have uh, different reasons, but the same reasons. Uh, myself, my brother, um, he didn't survive very long with, with his cancer, the same type that I have, and I I am a 22-year survivor, so I do want people to know that we, you know, we can live um, for and get through this and, and smile, and uh, we can live um, for a good, healthy, long time. And for me, when I was um, first, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I was starting up with the Dragon Boat team, I always felt that our team would be a light out there for women who were diagnosed or women who would be diagnosed in the future to tell them that there is life after breast cancer and it's wonderful. And then when I was uh, three and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. I was scheduled to go to a Dragon Boat festival on the island and I thought I was going to cancel but my team um, wanted me to go and I, I went, it was a wonderful weekend and that weekend I was on the boat and I realized that my mission in life now is to let women know that there is life after metastatic breast cancer and it's wonderful and my mission is to reach all those women who are really scared when they have that diagnosis and help them to know that life is life goes on and um, also to be the longest living woman with uh, metastatic breast cancer is one of my goals. <laughs> That's a good goal yeah. because I think you were doing research and you found out that there's someone out there who's 30 years. That's right, so, so I've got a long way to go. <laughs> you do, you do. And I think for me too, it started when I was first uh, after my surgery and I went out in public and the first public appearance I made was to go visit a friend in a hospital and and some kids laughed at me and I went it's not funny it's not funny at all how come they're laughing at me and that that was sort of a catalyst to get out into the schools talk to kids about being different being different is okay it's there's nothing wrong with being different there's kids with red hair there was kids with braces and crooked teeth and big kids little kids we come in all shapes and sizes, and I think for me, that was part of my, my mission, is to get this book out there and let people know that it's okay to be different. It's okay to look different on the outside. It's, it's what's inside that does really count. And putting that smile on your face. I always say, wearing a smile is the best thing you can put on in the morning. Out of all your wardrobe, just make sure that that's the... The first thing you put on in the morning and the last thing you take off at night is, mm -hmm. is your smile. So. And it's contagious. It is. You know when you do. We've been trying things through our, with our Facebook and sharing with people um, to when you're driving in your car, you look at the person next to you and smile. They smile back, don't they? They do. <laughs> was your they test. really do. It, it, it was a test and it worked. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we just want everybody to choose to smile. In a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Choosing to smile. Choosing to smile.